So now let's look at those saturation states with respect to partial pressure of CO2 in the ocean and the quantity of carbon that's in the dissolved inorganic carbon. So here we see the saturation state of the surface ocean with respect to calcite. On a horizontal axis, we have partial pressure of CO2. On a vertical axis, we have the DIC, the concentration of inorganic carbon, of dissolved inorganic carbon in the ocean, and that's expressed in micromole per kilo. Now, at first sight, it's clear that the higher the PCO2 in the atmosphere, the lower the saturation state of calcite in the ocean. And this we know because we've seen in the first class that the, um, that the more CO2 you have in the atmosphere, the more you will dissolve CO2 in the ocean and create carbonic acid and lower the pH and you make precipitation of carbon, of, of carbonate harder. We also see that for any given partial pressure of CO2, the lower the DIC, so the dissolved inorganic pool of the ocean, the lower the saturation state of the ocean will become. And we can also understand this because we know that the DIC contains the species that are dissolved species, so that's the bicarbonate ion, the dissolved CO2, but also, of course, carbonates. So for any given partial pressure of CO2, the bigger the DIC in the ocean, the more buffered it is, so the easier it is to maintain a um, saturation state for calcite. So now what's interesting is to look at the dotted red line because this dotted red line shows a projection for the state of the surface ocean in the coming years. The point here represents the state of the surface ocean in 1995, and the line represents the projection if we did nothing for carbon emission, atmospheric carbon emission. And it's very stark how quickly we will go you know, in, in 200 years, from an ocean that is today saturated, you know, with, with a saturation state of four to six times above, you know, saturation, so super saturated, which means precipitation is easy, to a state of the ocean that is actually undersaturated or just barely saturated with respect to calcite in 2300. So that um, has profound implication for how much we can precipitate calcite in the future and how much calcite will be preserved in the ocean at these high PCO2 if we reach them and continue putting CO2 in the atmosphere. Let's look at aragonite because aragonite is even more interesting because most skeletal component of uh, corals are aragonitic. So let's look at the saturation state of aragonite with respect to the same two uh, parameters. And what you see, again, same concept here, you have the PCO2 versus DIC, and the, the, the red line represents a projection. And it's really frightening because we are actually much closer to undersaturation with respect to aragonite because it's not as super saturated as calcite in the ocean. And you can see that we are already in a zone that is between two or three in terms of uh, supersaturation or, or getting close to this, if we go below this, below a saturation of uh, or supersaturation of three for aragonite, it's very difficult for aragonite, uh, aragonite skeleton to be precipitated. So now you may ask if aragonite is supersaturated in the yellow and the brown, why is it hard to precipitate aragonite? It's because saturation is not the only thing that drives chemical reaction. You also have kinetics. Kinetics is how hard it is to actually move element and precipitate elements. How much energy do you need to do this and how complicated in terms of number of steps you have to overcome to be able to do this. So overcome that energy barrier. But the, the scary thing is if we keep putting CO2 in the atmosphere at the rate that we are doing right now, by 2300, we will be pretty much undersaturated, uh, undersaturated or just saturated with respect to aragonite. And long before that, um, aragonite producers will have had uh, problems. So these concepts are important for paleoclimate, but also important for diagenesis. So now let's put them together in a diagenetic context, because one thing you should have noticed between these different diagrams is that calcite is al always 
more supersaturated at the same condition than aragonite. So what's the implication here? So this um, diagram kind of brings back home the point. So on a, ver on a vertical axis, you have the sol solubility product of the different minerals. And on the horizontal axis, you have temperature. So we'll look at, at reaction at different temperature. So what is the solubility product? The solubility product is if you are in a solution that is saturated with a given compound and you need to have rich saturation, this is not valid for undersaturated um, solution. Well, if you have rich saturation, you essentially have an equilibrium that exists between a solid phase and a dissolved phase. And where that equilibrium lies is called the solubility product. So in other words, if the solubility product is very high, it means that the equilibrium tends towards the dissolution of the solid into the solution. So that's a faster uh, process and less towards the uh, reprecipitation of the new phase. So you dissolve a little bit e easier than you reprecipitate. And of course, the reverse is true. On the plot, you see we have red line and green lines. The red line represents the solubility product of aragonite and the green line, the same solubility product for calcite. And in between these two lines, it represents the maximum supersaturation of, a, of carbonate in the system. Why? It, it, it is because between these two lines, you essentially have dissolution of aragonite and the potential to precipitate calcite, okay? Because the, the solubility product of calcite is lower. So it will tend to have an equilibrium closer to the solid phase rather than the liquid phase. So this is important because you can see that at low temperature, 25 degree, we have the maximum solubility product difference or the maximum supersaturation, which is 1.39. And that is a driving force for dissolution of aragonite in diagenetic system and reprecipitation of calcite as a more stable phase. And that is a theme we will see a lot in the diagenetic part of this class, which is we dissolve one phase to reprecipitate another phase. And again, bringing back the concept of uh, water rock ratio here, we only precipitate this one phase if we're not moving the phase away from the site of precipitation. And what's interesting with carbonates is it's exactly the reverse to what you expect in clastic system. You have a higher tendency of dissolution at low temperature and a higher tendency of precipitation at high water temperature, certainly at Earth's surface condition, but also all the way up to 175 degrees Celsius here. So, so that those are really important concepts to keep in mind, theoretical concept that will then apply to diagenetic processes, such as the diagenetic product behind me, this late fracture-related dolomite that we see in the cliff phase. So that brings me to a few conclusion for these uh, very important concept in diagenesis. The first thing is that diagenesis is an aqueous process. You need water for diagenesis to take place in carbonate rocks. That also means that if you have emplacement of oil and displace the water, you tend to stop diagenesis. So the timing of oil and placement has an interaction, plays with diagenetic processes. We've seen that the water rock ratio is a key concept to understand the amount of diagenesis and that for most diagenetic process, because you want to increase the water rock ratio if you, if you are to see diagenesis, a significant diagenesis, you require a pump of fluid. So the, you can move fluids through a pumping mechanism and we'll explore what those pumping mechanisms might be in different settings. Keep in mind that if you don't have a pumping mechanism, but you have a long time of exposure of your rock to water, this also means a high water rock ratio. So these are really key concepts here. Then we've seen that pH, temperature and pressure impact mineral supersaturation. So that's really, really key. And we've seen that the difference in saturation 
of different mineral can lead to process of dissolution of one mineral, but precipitation of a more stable mineral phase at a given condition. So in the next class, we'll start to explore different environment of diagenesis. Oh, 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 oh,